What's up guys? Uh, I've gotten a few good questions recently. Um, when I get multiples of questions, I like to just go ahead and do a video on it. I know it's going to benefit more than one person. Uh, I do do requests that are made by a single individual a lot of the times, but questions like this get asked often. Um, figured it's good to make a video on it. If you see something new, this is not mine. Uh, this is on loan from Drummer Boy, fellow YouTuber. Um, he kind of just contacted me out of the blue and asked if I wanted to see his direware, and I said, of course. Um, truly a one-of-a-kind, amazing knife. Uh, nine and a half ounces of pure tank-like awesomeness. It's, uh... <laughs> If you were to just imagine the fit and finish of a CRK uh, scaled up into something beefy like this, this is the incarnation of that. It's, uh, it's big and brawny and elegant and everything all wrapped up into one. Bearing system, the most perfect lock geometry I've ever seen. Uh, it's not a review. Um, I just could not resist showing this thing. It's just beautiful. I literally sent him uh, a message <laughs> and said, name your price, I'll pay whatever you want for it. And uh, he wouldn't sell it. I don't, don't blame him either. Gorgeous knife. Really lucky that I got to, to mess with this. Mess with it, it sounds so weird. Thank you very much, drummer boy. I'm taking excellent care of it. Um, <laughs> sorry, back to the original point of the video. People are asking how do strops actually sharpen a knife or an edge. Uh, strops don't really sharpen, they hone. They won't bring a dull edge, dull by meaning it's not properly apexed anymore. They won't bring a dull edge to sharpness under normal circumstances. Uh, they will bring a sharp edge like this back to sharpness after it sustains a little bit of damage uh, or you do a touch up on it or something. It will clean up an already sharp edge and make it even sharper. So it hones an edge. Um, it needs to be sharp for a strop to really uh, shine to its full potential. It needs to be relatively sharp. Let's put it that way. Strops hone pretty much by two different principles. <clears throat> the first is, uh, I'm going to zoom up on this, these are very poor drawings and I apologize for that, but uh, imagine you're looking at an edge at this view. So you're seeing an edge as you're looking down on it from this view, from, uh, from behind. I know that's out of focus, but whatever. Strops uh, will clean up an edge. So imagine this is a used edge. It's dirty. The apex has burrs and little irregularities and bits of steel hanging off of it from sustaining damage. Um, or this could be a burr from sharpening. Uh, a burr is essentially just a little bit of weakened metal hanging on the edge. Uh, I actually have a video on the burr. Um, I'll try and put it in the description down below. But this could be a burr, it could be a little bit of loose metal uh, from sustaining damage on the edge. Um, could be any number of things. Stropping can remove the burr and pull the damage out of the edge and make it a clean apex again like you see here. So it can take a dirty used edge, but notice it's a sharp edge, it is apexed. It can bring that dirty uh, damaged uh, possibly bird edge to a clean apex again and this will cut much better than this. Um, that's the first way a strop can hone. And this is probably most of what people think of when they think of stropping and, and making an edge sharp again. Second principle is uh, is a little bit, I'll say not as well known as the first. You're looking at an edge as if uh, you're looking down on it like this. So we're looking at 
an edge like this. So imagine that. Okay. Um, the second way a strop can hold an edge is by principle of uh, plastic deformation. Even uh, steel can go through plastic deformation. And this is essentially where if you're looking at the bevel, so you're looking at this part of the knife, the bevel, you see these scratches, grind lines from the edge. Uh, you see how they're all coarse, uneven. Uh, you'll have really high peaks and low valleys. So if you want to draw, if you could look at the edge on a microscopic level, it would have little peaks and high peaks like this and low spots and jagged and maybe a, some couple higher spots. It'll look like that, but you're looking at uh, the flat section of the edge. This isn't actually the the apex. Uh, this is just the shoulder where the grind lines are. Through plastic deformation, a strop loaded with compound can actually even out uh, these peaks. It can actually draw the peaks into the valleys. So these peaks will actually deform and fall into the valleys and will, it will actually smooth it out like this. So it can turn uh, an edge with really coarse grind lines with huge peaks and valleys into something that's much smoother uh, with less noticeable scratches. So you're essentially turning uh, a really jagged edge into something really smooth and clean uh, with uniform scratches. So you're filling the voids with the peaks, if that makes sense. Um, I tried to think of a material to show this with. I don't have anything off handy, so hopefully this drawing helps. Uh, this drawing, this, is as if you're looking at the grind lines on the blade, on the uh, bevel right here. Um, this plastic deformation is actually also how you can take an edge, say an extra coarse DMT, you can take an edge that will not really cut paper cleanly uh, straight off an extra coarse DMT because it has these huge toothy pieces on the apex. When you take an edge off of an extra coarse DMT, it's going to look like that under a microscope. It's going to have huge uh, valleys and peaks and, and what essentially is micro serration. <clears throat> this will not cut paper that well. It won't cut really anything that well except fibrous materials and, and uh, really tough stuff, rope, uh, just stuff like that, plant, plant fibers, really, really tough stuff to get through. This will cut that extremely well, but it won't push cut, it won't cut paper, it won't cut food that well, unless it's fibrous again. Um, but this is a good edge to have. A good way that, uh, to get a compromise between this and a polished edge like this is people will actually sharpen on a stone, so this is an extra coarse DMT edge right here on a microscopic level. Uh, they will actually take the stone directly, or take the edge directly off the extra coarse DMT stone and strop it. And essentially what you're doing, again, is taking these huge peaks and valleys and smoothing them out. So they look more akin to this. So this is your, this is your edge off of an extra coarse DMT. And this is your edge after stropping. So... You've taken these huge peaks and valleys, and through plastic deformation using a strop, you have pretty much smeared these peaks into the valleys to make it a smoother cutting surface. This way you still have peaks and valleys, aka micro serrations, but they are much smoother and more able to cut uh, a wider variety of materials. So that's pretty much it. I don't want to really dive into it any further than that uh, and confuse people um, but that's pretty much the gist of it this is how people get polished but still toothy edges so when people see well you have a polished uh, edge like I have here you see that it's polished and reflective well they automatically think that it has no bite to it because it's polished when that's just not true you can have a polished bevel and still have a really toothy cutting edge 
Um, and this is how people do it. They take an edge directly off a of very coarse stone and then strop it and use plastic deformation to fill in the voids and make it a more smooth cutting edge but still have a lot of tooth. So you can have a very clean cutting edge. It'll slice paper really well, but it's also very aggressive when you're cutting things like rope and fibrous materials. So I hope this wasn't too confusing. Uh, I just decided to do this really late at night. Uh, can't really talk that well. And I'm mesmerized by this dire wear. So let me know if this helps, if I didn't cover anything uh, adequately. And I'll cover it a little bit better. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.